Good morning, dear friends and teachers. Today, I'm going to be explaining my flowchart on how wood is used in a wood furnace power station to produce electricity. This is my flowchart. First and foremost, wood is a renewable source of energy and there's lots of it available. Step 1. Wood and big logs are cut down and then are brought to the wood burning furnace power station via transport. The wood is being brought from various areas and forests. Step 2. After the wood is unloaded in the burning furnace, a boiler like this is used to burn the wood. That's what creates the heat. Step 3. Generated heat is used to boil water which produces steam. Step 4. The steam is turned down at pipes at a high pressure at the end of the pipe but later the turbines rotate turning on generators that produce electricity. Here you can see an actual demonstration of what actually happens. The steam is going up, the blades of the turbines are rotating and the generator is being powered. The generator creates electricity. Here you can also see an actual image of a generator. Step 5. From the wood burning furnace, the generated electricity is supplied through the national grid. A series of transformers and wires then this electricity reaches our houses. Here are all the sources that made this presentation possible. Thank you. Renewable energy or energy generated from sources that don't run out, like solar, wind, hydropower, geothermal, and nuclear. Using these sources brings environmental, social, and economical benefits with no global warming emissions. You, they also create jobs. The most widely used renewable energy source is hydropower. It's also known as hydroelectricity. Almost 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. It's also vital for lives. This water can also be used as a source of energy to produce electricity. Hydroelectricity Hydroelectricity refers to the conversion of flowing water into electricity. It's considered a renewable energy source since it's continuously renewed by the sun. Today, modern hydro plants produce electricity using turbines and generators. The speed of the moving water is used to move the blades of a turbine creating kinetic energy. The electromagnetic generator connected to the turbine converts the kinetic energy into electrical energy. There are two main types of hydroelectricity production, that is, dams and runoff river. Hydro dams. Hydro dams utilize the potential energy from dammed water to produce electricity. A dam is a large barrier constructed to raise the level of water and control its flow. The increasing height of the water in the reservoir creates gravitational force for turning the turbine when water is released. Some dams also contain an additional layer at their base where water is stored to be pumped to the higher reservoir for release when electricity is in demand. This is called pump storage hydro, runoff river hydro. We often see it in many rivers. The runoff river hydro also uses turbines and generators, but it relies on the natural flow of the river, diverting just a portion of the river to the turbines. Because runoff river hydro depends on the natural flow of water, there can be variability in the natural flow of the river, and so it is used less than damped hydro. Benefits It's a cost competitive, even though the initial cost building can be high. It's a reliable source of energy. It pairs well with other sources since it can be used as a base load power. In some cases, it also helps in flood control. Also, it provides water. There can also be some negative effects or concerns, such as it has a major impact on the environment, such as it affects the wildlife habitat. It forces peoples in river and communities to move out of their homes, blocking the path for fishes. Additionally, the dam failures can be catastrophic. Also, this energy source is not always free of greenhouse gas emissions. Tidal Barrage Tidal power is a form of hydropower, which converts the energy from the natural rise and fall of the tides into electricity. Tides are caused for the combined effects of gravitational forces exerted by the moon, the sun, and the rotation of the earth. 
Tidal plants can only be installed along coastlines. Coastlines often experience too high tides and too low tides daily. The difference in water levels between the high and low tides must be at least 5 meters to produce electricity. Tidal electricity can be created by several technologies. The main ones include tidal barrages, tidal fences, and tidal turbines. We are going to focus on tidal barrages. Tidal barrages are the most efficient tidal energy sources. A tidal barrage is a dam that utilizes the potential energy generated by the change in height of the tides. Now, let's take a look at an animation of tidal barrage. So here, we can see that the change in the height of the tide is causing the turbine to rotate. When the turbine moves, kinetic energy is generated. Then, the generator helps to convert this kinetic energy into electrical energy. So, this energy turns on a turbine, which in turn creates electricity. Its benefits include that it's easy to install, it's renewable, it has no direct greenhouse gas emissions and lower environmental impact. It's also a predictable energy source because the ocean's tidal pattern are well understood, so it's highly attractive for electrical grid management. However, there are also some negative effects of these energy as well, such as the amount of energy generated through tidal power is very low compared to the other renewable energy sources. This is mainly because of the very specific site requirements which are necessary to produce tidal electricity. Tide cycles do not always match the daily consumption pattern of electricity and therefore do not provide sufficient capacity to satisfy demand. So now let's know about geothermal energy. Hmm, so you might be wondering, what is geothermal energy? So geothermal energy refers to producing energy from the internal heat of the earth. The internal heat of the earth is generated from the radioactive decay of minerals and continual heat loss from the earth's original formation. Geothermal wells are drilled into the earth's crust at approximately a depth of 3 to 10 kilometers. The heat is extracted with a variety of methods but in most cases is drawn from the earth using water and steam. Hot water from the earth may be directly extracted to heat homes and buildings, so this is done either by directly circulating the hot water through buildings or pumping it uh, to a heat exchanger that transfers the heat to the building. So geothermal heat can also be used to produce electricity in a geothermal power plant. Electricity is generated uh, when geothermal heat produces steam that turns turbines on a generator. So the major regions of geothermal development are the most volcanically and tectonically active regions in the world. Though geothermal energy is currently a small player uh, in the world's energy mix, one of its uh, key advantages is its reliability and consistent power generation which means that it can provide baseload electricity. The concerns with geothermal energy include the accidental release of CO2 and hydrogen sulfide emissions stored in the Earth's groundwater that is often used to carry geothermal heat to the Earth's surface. So now let's know how geothermal energy is used to produce ele uh, electricity. So first, hot water is pumped from deep underground through a well under high pressure. When the water reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped which causes the water to turn into steam. The steam spins a turbine, which is connected to a generator that produces electricity. The steam cools off in a cooling tower and condenses back to the water. So the cooled water is pumped back into the earth to being the process again. So these are the bibliographies. What is wave energy? Wave energy is a type of energy that we can obtain from the movement of the waves which are created continuously in water bodies including oceans and seas, etc. Wave power converts the periodic up and down movement of the ocean's waves into electricity by placing equipment on the surface of the oceans that captures the energy produced by the wave movement and converts this mechanical energy into electrical power. Wave is created by the wind, which is uh, in turn is caused by the sun, thus making waves a renewable resource.
advantages and disadvantages of wave energy. Advantages include, as wave power itself is a renewable resource of energy extraction, it emits less ozone depleting and other harmful gases, no fuels cost or atmospheric pollution. Wave energy is free since it comes from waves from various water bodies including ocean, sea, etc. The waves generated in the ocean are most of the time continuous, therefore, there is no need for power storage. No creation of harmful byproducts including gas, pollution and waste, etc. can produce a lot of energy and no fuel needed or waste produced. Now, the disadvantages of wave energy include hard to obtain energy because the process of energy extraction is a complex one. Wave energy is also not very reliable. Problems transferring the energy. Strong waves can destroy the machine. We can only enjoy the wave energy if we live in a place near a sea or ocean or any water bodies. The machinery can cause harm to the fishes as it can block their path of sunlight and oxygen. While in work, the machines can make noise pollution which can disturb the sea creatures like fish, etc. Wind power or energy Renewable energy refers to those energy sources which are limitless or are available as long as the sun lasts. One of the renewable energies is wind energy. This energy comes from the movement of air or wind. Now, the question arises, what is wind and where does it come from? Wind is moving air caused by difference in the atmospheric pressure. In order to get wind, first we need the sun. The sun's rays heats up the planet. Once the planet is heated, the air begins to possess different temperatures. Because there are variations in the temperature, there is both hot air and cold air. Now, hot air tends to rise and cold air tends to sink. This movement of uneven air produces wind. Wind speeds differ based on geography, topography, and seasons, for which some locations are more suitable for the generation of wind power than others. There are also wind locations onshore and offshore. Energy is extracted or obtained from wind when the air's motion is converted into mechanical energy. The mechanism that is used to convert air motion into electricity is referred to as a turbine. Turbines are large structures with spinning blades. Now, how is wind used to generate electricity? When the wind moves, the kinetic energy contained in the air currents rotates the turbine blades. Behind the blades at the top of the wind turbine, in the box-like structure, the blades are connected with a low-speed shaft. However, in order to produce electricity, it is a prerequisite to increase the speed of the low-shift shaft. That's when we need the gearbox, which accelerates the speed over 100 times, and later transfers it to the high-speed shaft. Further, the high-speed shaft is connected to a generator that converts the kinetic energy into electricity. The electrical energy or electricity then goes through a transformer that further passes the electricity to the national grid, from which it reaches to our house. Now we will learn about the advantages and disadvantages of wind power. The advantages of wind energy may include production of electricity has no direct carbon dioxide emissions. As wind power itself 
is a renewable resource of energy extraction. It supports less emissions of ozone depleting gases. Also, no fuel costs or atmospheric pollution. And that these advantages include as wind does not blow all the time, energy can't always be produced through wind energy and thus can cause intermittency issues for power grids. The prices of wind power have always been higher than other conventional and electricity generation resources. Installing wind turbines and other materials which help obtain wind energy easily are very costly. Thus, supporting them is not something very easy for developing or non-developed countries. Land use, noise and bird disruption, and many more are, un- are different challenges for which production of electricity and energy from wind power is not always possible in all areas. Visual and noise pollution unless at sea. And there are many more advantages and disadvantages of wind energy or wind power.